Halo Combat Evolved, one of the best video games ever made. Yet, even this masterpiece is not without its rough spots. This is probably one of the most notorious levels in the entire Halo franchise. Often described as too long and repetitive, most players were not too fond of the library, the seventh level in Halo CE. But we're not here to talk about the level casually, we're here to talk about the speedrun. And oh boy, does it live up to its reputation. So, Sloth. That's me. How do you feel about the library? It is the worst experience anyone playing this franchise has in the speedrunning setting. As I said in my last video, a very common theme you'll see in a bad speedrun is randomness. And here is no different. Except it's not randomness like in the traditional sense that can be legitimately fun to play against. No, in this case, just literal randomness. Basic probability. And it sucks. It legitimately ruins what would otherwise be an extremely good speedrun level. It would capture a lot of what I think the devs were really going for here. Mostly the movement, just running and gunning from this brand new and powerful enemy. Fighting for your life, shotgun in hand, it's awesome. But that's never what you remember. You only remember what your splits look like afterwards and how it wasn't even your fault. So in this video, I'm going to break down every single reason why this level is so terrible. Answer that question of just how lucky you have to be to get that perfect optimal library. And along the way, I'll describe the multitude of hilarious and stupid ways that you can completely get screwed over. Same as usual, I'll be focusing on the legendary category, CE's most fun, most popular, and most competitive category to run. I truly hope you enjoy. Ah, uh, the library. Really doesn't give you much time to think when you first arrive, does it? Pretty much right after meeting the monitor in the swamp, you're spirited away before you can even really process what's happening. And here in this strange new place, the monitor tells you that we need to retrieve the activation index in order to activate Halo's defenses and wipe out the flood for good. He did of course leave out the whole killing everything in the galaxy bit, but details. Now grabbing this green triangle should be an easy feat. I mean, it's literally right there. Just grab it. Well, because it's contained or something, we have to travel up four entire floors, all of which have lots of flood to face, carrying a variety of increasingly ridiculous weapons. And most importantly, we have a bunch of doors that we have to sit around and wait at. Truly exciting stuff. And as you're about to see, these simple doors are about to become the biggest problem in the entire speedrun. We'll get to that in a moment. First, let's talk about the very first floor. The first floor. Here we take a fairly different route than you'd expect. Rather than running to the left as the game intends, we're instead going to go through the center using a grenade jump. This skips a bunch of difficult spawns as well as just being plain faster. We make our way towards this corridor housing two flood, a human with a pistol and another with a plasma rifle. We first kill the pistol flood and then bait out the plasma flood. We then shoot off his arm so he drops his gun and get him to follow us. Now at this point you might be thinking, this seems like a lot of work. Why not just go directly to where we need to go? Well, you might remember this big locked door. There's a lot of them on this level. That grenade jump we did at the start actually skipped some triggers that would make this door open. Now, we could just hit the two triggers needed while still skipping the difficult spawns, but then you're still waiting 25 seconds for it to open. Kind of gross. And that's where this plasma rifle flood comes in. You see, he's not quite like a normal flood. He's what we call a reviver. Now, what is a reviver? It's actually quite simple. Every single flood combat form that spawns in the game has a chance to be what we call a reviver flood. A reviver is a little different from the other flood. When their health drops below 30%, they play dead. They fall down to the ground and after a short period of time, they get back up. Almost like they're zombies, which, well yeah, they technically are. This seemingly innocuous act of playing dead will actually become one of the most important pieces of time save in Halo Combat Evolved speedruns. You see, there's something unique that happens physically wise when a reviver flood plays dead. They completely lose all collision and you're free to walk on top of them however you wish. But once they stop playing dead and get back up, they regain their collision. However, the game does not like when two objects intersect and when they do, the game will attempt to correct the problem with a teleport. In this case, if Chief is standing in a particular spot on a reviver flood and it gets back up, the game will teleport Chief forward a short distance. Now, remember those big locked doors that you're supposed to wait at? No more! 
with the aid of a reviver flood, that short teleport forward actually clips us inside the door. And this is the flood bump, the core of library speedruns, the thing that changed everything. Let me put this in perspective. There are six doors on this level that we are technically supposed to wait at. One, we can just bypass with a simple grenade jump, leaving five others that we're still stuck waiting at. And they take a combined four and a half minutes to open. That's a pretty long time. And of these five doors, four of them are going to rely on flood bumps similar to this one. And this is where the root of our problem lies. Under normal circumstances, whether or not a given flood is a reviver is up to pure luck. Just a 40% chance that a flood is a reviver and we bump through the door. But wait, hold on. Let's get back to this plasma rifle flood. Why is he always a reviver? Why is he not subject to that same 40% chance like everyone else? Well, would you believe me if I told you it's because they spawn in right away? Yeah, these two floods spawn in the instant the level is loaded. You can even see them during the opening cutscene with a debug camera. There they are, just standing around. Okay, but so what? What does this even have to do with revivers? Well, it basically comes down to how randomization works in Halo CE. It's based on something called called a seed, which is really just a fancy dynamic number fed into a big complicated math function and out on the other side you get a random answer. In Halo CE specifically, a level's initial seed, the very first one present when the level is loaded in, is a set static thing. It doesn't change until stuff starts happening. Because these two floods spawn in at that first possible instance, we always get this same initial seed fed in and out on the other side is always the same answer. Two flood one of which is a reviver. It's a neat little game quirk that just so happened to work out here, but don't get used to it. Anyway, back to first door. We approach the door, reviver flood in tow, and here's where the magic happens. We do a simple setup to get him into a semi-specific spot, then we shoot him to make him play dead, and boom. When he gets back up, it teleports us forward a short distance inside the door. And just like that, we skipped a rather hectic initial fighting section. All for free and without losing any time. Well, unless something stupid happens. But regardless of what happens, we still have a bit of a problem. We don't have a shotgun. Easy starts off with one, but Legendary is just given the assault rifle, which is... it sucks. The shotgun is effectively a requirement, and so brings us to one of the coolest strats in the entire speedrun. Shotgun swag. Oh yeah. The strat. First, we bounce one grenade off the wall to get rid of some pesky flood and carriers to the right that can just get in the way and be annoying. Then we turn our attention to the flood on the left, one of which is guaranteed to have that precious shotgun we need. He'll start chasing us and while he's running towards us, we throw a grenade, exploding it just behind him. This explosion launches both him and more importantly, his shotgun directly towards us and we catch it in midair. It's easily the most Master Chief from the books moment. It's really cool, just uh, no Note that there's a couple glass holes here on your path, which, if you're not paying attention... Yeah, maybe not so cool. But hey, at least we have a shotgun now, one of the best weapons in the entire game. Okay. The infamous shotgun glitch. Basically, if you kill a flood on the same game tech that he fires his gun, in this case the shotgun, there's a chance that it does a ridiculous amount of damage. Like, you could be at full health and shields and just dead. You can do your best to minimize it, but inevitably, it'll get you eventually. It's an ever persistent run killer. Anyway, even if this doesn't happen, trying to blast your way through this next section is still a surefire way to get yourself killed. Fortunately, there's a little overshield in this crevice that we can grab and the extra sponginess will really come in handy here, carrying us easily all the way to the very first elevator, and that concludes the first floor. All things considered, fairly tame so far. Some mild memes here and there, but nothing major, so what's even the big deal? Well, aspiring new Halo speedrunner, coming right up is quite possibly one of the worst tricks in the entire franchise. <laughs> Let's just get this over with. Immediately after getting off the elevator, we basically have the worst strat in the entire game. This door. That one. 
this one right here. Probably the worst thing that's ever happened to this speedrun. And it's all because of this strat right here, carrier bump. On the surface, it's simple. Anyone can do it, really. You first aggro this carrier in the back corner onto you, then you toss a grenade just behind him. This causes him to go airborne, and as he lands, you crouch onto his right leg, or his left leg. It's an ongoing debate which leg. It doesn't actually matter. With a bit of luck, you'll then teleport forward into the door, which allows you to pass through similar to the first door. In some rare cases, you can even teleport way past the door. Okay. Or in even rarer, rarer cases, you teleport so far forward, you just fall off the map. That was interesting. Anyway, get your pencils and notebooks out because it's time to break this trick down. When I say we need a bit of luck, I mean, first we just need a good carrier spawn. Yeah, that carrier in the back corner, you don't get him every time. And the other carriers just seem to run away most of the time and act all weird. So if you don't get this spawn, you're kind of screwed unless you get extra lucky. There's six possible carrier spawn locations, but only five that will actually spawn in. So the odds here aren't too bad. You have an 83% chance to get this particular carrier spawn that you need. Next, let's look at how Carrier Bump actually works under the hood. Why you teleport forward into the door. Every single carrier in the game, when they die and explode, will spawn in anywhere between three to six infection forms. These infection forms have collision and spread out at random angles a set distance from the carrier explosion point. If one or more of these infection forms happen to spawn inside Chief, then, similar to the Revivers, the game doesn't like this. Two objects are colliding, so to resolve the conflict, the game teleports Chief forward, into the door, or on the other side. The segmented speedrun even teleported to the other end of the map. So here's the kicker. We need at least one of these infection forms to spawn inside Chief's ass. Yeah, that's actually how this works. It's it's the focal point, really the, the center of the universe, you can think of it. Each infection form will spawn the same distance away from the carrier explosion, but the angle they spawn at is random, within a 360 degree radius. If we assume perfect player positioning on the right leg, Leg, or the left leg, whichever leg you feel like, there's about a five-ish percent chance that any given infection form will spawn deep up there and teleport Chief forward. So with all that in mind, we can represent the full chance to hit Carrier Bump as the probability we get a bump off the first popcorn, plus the probability we didn't get it with the first, but we did with the second, plus the probability we didn't get it with the first or the second, but we did with the third. You probably get the idea from here. You're basically just constraining the problem to a collection of independent outcomes, then you add them to Together. And this all works out to a wonderfully terrible 20.5%. And when you combine that with the 83% chance just to get a carrier spawn to begin with, this leaves us with just a 17% chance to hit carrier bump. And that's actually a generous estimate. If the player is maybe not quite in the right spot, you could get a teleport, but it isn't far enough forward to actually put you inside the door. So that 17% chance, it might actually be a bit lower once you consider that you don't have a lot of time to line up on the leg or a popcorn can get in the way of your grenade. Not only does Carrier Bump have the worst odds of any other Flood Bump by far, it also saves the most amount of time. We are quite literally talking about 40 seconds here. And to make matters worse, even with the best possible checkpoint, each attempt will still cost you about 10 to 12 seconds. So after only three or four attempts, you're already losing time over just waiting. It really is hard to quantify just just how demoralizing this trick is. I do not expect it to work anytime I get there. And when it does, my heart rate will probably go from a resting like 60 to probably over 100 just instantly the instant I hit the bump. Because I am so dead inside going in that I, my heart's just not beating like at all. Imagine as a top runner going into this knowing that five out of six runs in the late game will not continue. No matter what you do, no matter how well you play. What's going through your mind if it takes you like 20 tries? Despair, pain. Well, I mean, I expect it, so I just laugh the more I don't get the trick. I still got two more RNG checks to go and I can't die. Yeah, it's gonna get a lot worse. Once we're past this second door, we move on. And as we approach this door at the far end, we're actually supposed to stop and wait for the monitor to return, but we're not gonna do that. Notice the small opening. We can instead just do a simple grenade jump and keep moving along. And up ahead with another well-placed grenade, we can quickly dispatch of those spawns coming up the ramp. We then move past this tunnel and this is where things are gonna get a bit sketchy. We arrive 
arrive at the infamous Cancer Hallway. Oh, this section. Don't think it's just smooth sailing after hitting Carrier Bump. Don't forget, we can still die. Right off the bat, ambush. You want to kill the Flood in front of you, then the two up on either side. If you have a grenade, you want to throw it at the ramp and then get shotgun glitched. It, yeah, it can happen with grenades too. Anyway, you want to immediately jump up onto this corner, speed being of the essence. You need to keep moving as fast as possible, and this next section is where things get really hairy. Upon turning the corner, you're immediately greeted with a hallway chock full of carriers, but those aren't the big problem. You'll notice a shotgun flood and the much more dangerous rocket launcher flood, and he can one-shot you. There's no turning back either, or even trying to play it safe. You've got an army of Flood chasing behind you, so you hold W and hope to get through. If you manage to have a second frag grenade, you'll want to throw it at the other end. The rocket launcher Flood actually has increased health too, so the extra firepower will really come in handy here. But the explosion will also scatter all the carriers around in random directions. So you're walking through and it's just raining carriers all over the place, doing damage, killing your shields, and it's not enough just to survive this hallway either. There's another army of flood waiting for you as you turn the corner. So if you take too much damage, you'll just die to the next section anyway. It's just a lot of bad situations that you have to try and avoid. And to make matters worse, the closest checkpoint is about 45 to 50 seconds back. That's more than Carrier Bump even saves. So it's often just rip run. But once you turn this last corner, you're home free. All that chaos back behind you. Yeah, library second floor is a bit of a mess. The worst trick in the speed run, follow by one of the worst sections in the speed run with a multitude of ways we can die and just lose all that time it would have saved anyway. Oh, and we're only halfway done. Now it's on the third floor. All right, third floor. Not too much going on here at the very start. There is some flood at the far end, which are conveniently placed for us to replenish our shotgun ammo, or we die to another shotgun glitch, whichever the game feels like, really. And afterwards, we have a nice long tunnel with a bunch of flood at the other end. A well-placed grenade will dispatch them pretty quickly and easily, or you die to another shotgun glitch. At the very end of this long hallway, you'll want to make sure you start delaying a checkpoint, even going so far as to throw a plasma grenade to delay it further. We strategically delay this checkpoint to right here, right before this trigger that spawns in some flood, which are conveniently placed right in front of this big locked door. You can probably see where I'm going with this. Welcome to the infamous dark door. The strat is simple. It even works underwater. We will try over and over and over again until we get a reviver. Each time we don't get one, we revert back to the checkpoint, which resets our RNG. Rinse and repeat. Now get your pencils back out. No, no, don't worry. This round will be much easier. In front of us at dark door will always be three spawns. Two elite flood with a human at the far end. The most optimal flood to try is the elite flood all the way to the left. So the strat is to kill the human flood with a grenade, then try the left elite flood, and assuming he's a reviver, we'll line up our flood bump. Not much to it. So the odds here are actually very simple. As I mentioned back on first floor, the chance of any given flood being a reviver is 40%. So the odds of getting an optimal dark door is just 40%. It's about as simple as it gets. <laughs> Getting that optimal first try dark door bump will save a whopping 37 seconds. And if you delay the checkpoint properly, the time loss per try is only about five seconds apiece. It's actually really nice in this respect. Usually you'll get a reviver on your first one to three tries and you're still saving a boatload of time over sitting and waiting, at least theoretically. Another one, another one. Yeah, so this was the 2023 Halo Runs annual relay race. It literally took Cambid 15 tries to get a reviver. What's the most amount of tries that Dark Door has taken you? 28. 
Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's just get down to it. 40% doesn't seem too bad when you say it out loud, but it actually kind of is. Think about it. More than half of your attempts will not get this bump. Also, that 40% starts looking even worse once you combine it with the chance of hitting carrier bump. Just a 6.8% chance that we hit both of them. Nothing you can do about it either. The game gives it to you, or in the much more likely case, doesn't give you anything. It's all starting to make sense now, isn't it? But we soldier on. We're not quite done yet. Past Dark Door, we will opt not to take the dangerous left path and will instead run straight ahead along the right side. There's some Jumper Flood that you can just spawn kill and then that's it. No spawns in this open area if you do this next bit correctly. You want to take this last jump very far to the right. If done correctly, you will skip the trigger that spawns in all the enemies in this area. So it just becomes a nice leisurely walk. We make our way further without too much hassle where we encounter yet another locked door. Seriously, another one? Okay, now you might be thinking time for more math? Nope, we're actually going to do something a little different this time. You see, once we hit this point, the door behind us will begin to close. But if we're quick enough, we can get to it just before it fully closes and then clip inside it. Then with another relatively easy setup in this corner, we can teleport upwards and land on top of the door. Then it's just a short jump over to this little light fixture. And with one more teleport, we are now on the other side of the locked door. We call this trick light bump. And I go so far as to say it saved the whole speed run. Here's why. By far, this door takes the longest amount of time to open. A whole minute and a half. Before light bump was found, this was just another flood bump. The hope that you get a reviver, which as we've seen, isn't very likely to happen. And this would be the second dice roll on this floor alone. But that's not even the worst part. This door taking so long to open means your entire run would often just come down to this one single bump. Most of your runs just gone. Losing over a minute on a single trick is insane. And this is after everything else we've already dealt with so far. But light bump fixes this. Anyone can do it. The clip is consistent. The up warp is easy. The actual teleport itself is finicky, but workable with a checkpoint. It's amazing. Just like that, a huge reset point gone. And so light bump became one of the greatest finds in this entire speed run. All that's left to do now is get on the elevator and make our way to the fourth and final floor where it's really not going to get any better. Ah, fourth floor, the last floor, the worst of it all, seemingly finally behind us, at least theoretically. Almost immediately, you'll stumble across this semi-open door with the intention to take this side tunnel that's full of carriers and other crap, but you don't have to do that. Instead, we're going to do another grenade jump and save us all that trouble. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for yet another locked door immediately after. As per usual, Spark runs off to, uh... Do that, and we have to wait around 54 seconds for him to come back and open it up for us. So, like the other doors, it's time to once again roll the dice and hope we get a reviver. Here, we specifically need a human reviver. Elite Flood are wild, unpredictable, and they just fall down kind of funny. They just really aren't usable in this context. The only two good candidates here are the ones that spawn in these vents. One can spawn the close vent, which is more optimal, but another can spawn in the far vent, which is still more than workable. Either way, Way we can do a rather easy setup to bait them into the correct spot for a flood bump, assuming they're a reviver, of course. All right, let's get those pencils back out. There's seven possible spawn locations. There's the two human flood in the vents I mentioned earlier, two elite flood that can also spawn in those vents next to them, and two more elite flood that will jump through a hole in the door. There's also some random human flood that can spawn way off in this tunnel for some reason he doesn't actually do anything. Of these seven possible spawns, we will only get four of them, randomly assigned of course. Now, it's important to note that if we get both human vent spawns, we can't actually try both of them. Reason being, we'll likely die if we try both. Things get very sketchy after your first attempt, it's just not a good idea. So, if we get both, we will just try the close vent. With this in mind, let's do some math. It'll be similar to the way we did carrier bump. We first have the probability we get the close vent spawn 
spawn and he's a reviver. Then we add the probability we don't get the close vent spawn, but we got the far vent spawn and he's a reviver. This works out to 22.86% and 11.43% respectively. Adding together for a grand total of just a 34.29% chance to get that optimal last door. And just like Carrier Bump, this is being generous. There's still lots of things that can go wrong even if you do everything perfectly. The reality of this bump is likely even lower. And holy smokes, that's actually it. That's the last one, the last RNG door. It's finally over. At this point, you've probably noticed a common theme with these doors. You'll usually get bad luck and lose a bunch of time. That's just the nature of library. Now, before we go down the philosophicals and what ifs, we're still not quite out of the woods yet. Once we're past last door, we move down this final hallway and approach the very, very last door. We, we didn't quite name things correctly. Normally, you're supposed to just wait a short bit for it to open, then there's this massive army of flood defending the index that you have to deal with, but we're not gonna deal with this. Instead, we're doing another grenade jump to get through that little opening in the door. At first glance, this seems ridiculously risky. There's an army of flood waiting for you on the other side. Well, the game never actually expected you to do this, so that army of flood doesn't actually spawn in right away. It only spawns in after the door starts fully opening, and that's just enough time to get past them before they start going crazy. Well, this strat seems straightforward enough. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Well... Boy! Oh boy! The one in 100! Oh my god, I love it! Yes, there is one last meme, the one to rule them all, an extremely rare, stupid thing that can happen. One of these jumping flood has a shotgun, and if you get really unlucky, it can land right in this opening and just blast you. Imagine hitting all those bumps, being on pace for the exceptional, perfect library, and then just having your run end like this. I just hit the end stream button and be out from there. Oh, and just to add a bit of salt to the wound, the final library cutscene is unskippable, but it makes for a good bathroom break. And now. Let's talk about the final odds for an optimal library. First floor, technically 100%, technically. The second floor with Carrier Bump, 17%. The third floor with Dark Door, 40%. And finally, fourth floor with Last Door, 34.29%. So the odds of getting the perfect optimal library on legendary difficulty stands at a pathetic 2.33%, or about one in 50 runs. And this is the favorable approximation. I'm being generous here, maybe even more so than I should. I ignored unlucky pathing. I ignored the human element. I ignored the shotgun glitches, the meme hallways, and I even ignored the fact that the elevators themselves can lose you like three seconds apiece because they are on a cycle and sometimes you just get unlucky. And so, as runners, we have to manage our expectations very carefully because this is the expected outcome. This is what you should expect the level to do the vast majority of the time. Runs that go the distance, the ones that defy the odds, are truly exceptional. At the top level, you should expect to put in hundreds, if not thousands of attempts before you get a workable library. And even then, the current state of the speedrun is you need an almost perfect library just for a single shot at the top spot. Maybe even more so than this 2% would suggest. And so, library presents an almost existential crisis of sorts. On one hand, run spend massive amounts of time optimizing every last crevice that we can, putting in thousands of attempts to something like Cryobump, which is just inconsistent nonsense, but it saves seven seconds. On the other hand, you lose one unfair weighted dice roll and goodbye 30 seconds. Just like that, nothing you could even do. And that's why this level truly sucks, probably more so than any I will ever talk about on this channel. It's a sore thumb on an otherwise amazing speedrun. If, if these doors didn't exist, right? The doors that and the flood bumps and all that RNG, if it didn't exist. If you are a person who likes to just run, it's the perfect level. Like if you do, if you don't stop and fight all the waves, like I've seen some people do, they'll just they'll sit there and just kill waves, which is not how you should play the level. I feel like the level was intentionally made to just keep running as the horde chases you, but the doors just completely ruin that. So if you remove the doors, the level is literally just perfect. That's the nature of the library. One of the worst speedrun levels of all time. A level with so much potential to be incredible, wiped away by locked doors and random bumps.
You know, Spark could have just teleported us to the fourth floor. You ever think about that?